Jellyfish are actually some of my most favorite creatures that you can find on Earth. It's so fascinating that they can exist without having a brain or a heart, and they don't really feel any pain, and they just kind of exist, I mean, <laughs> but they're so beautiful, and um, I've always wanted to have a custom doll themed after a jellyfish, so that is what we are going to be making today. Seeing as jellyfish are made up of 95% water, I figured Kiyomi Haunterly would be my best base doll to use. I actually rerouted this doll probably sometime last year because I've been planning on making this doll for a long time, but just never got around to it until now. <laughs> So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So this incredible hairstyle that our Kiyomi doll is wearing is all thanks to Emma. If you're not following designer ECE already, I don't know what you're doing. Pause the video and go follow her now, please. For this reroute, I used like a metallic blue, a pastel pink, a pastel purple, and some curly textured hair to act as like jellyfish tentacles. Kiyomi's face is kind of already naturally fitting for a jellyfish themed doll, which might explain why I put off giving this doll a face up for so long, but let's get started. First of all, I'm using 100% acetone, and like always, if you want any of the materials that I mention in this video, you can find them in the link in the description. At first I didn't want to take off her lipstick because I really love the blue shimmery color that it is. I think it's super gorgeous, but I ended up trying to give her a shimmery lip, just a different color. After staring at Kiyomi's face mold for so long, I think it is actually a modified Draculaura face mold. Obviously the eyes and nose and ears are different, but the face shape I think is pretty much the same thing. Kiyomi's eye mold actually makes it really easy to do a face up on her since all you have to do is follow the guidelines of the mold that are very visible this time. This does, however, kind of restrict you from doing other eye shapes because it would be much more obvious that um, there is a mold that was not followed if you tried to change the eye shape in any way. I didn't exactly go in with a complete plan for this face up, so a lot of the colors were really just chosen um, based on what I was feeling in the moment. I absolutely adore this translucent vinyl and plastic that they used for the Haunted line in Monster High. I really, really hope that we can get something similar to this in the future, maybe from G3 Dolls, because these colors are so, so pretty and I want to use them for more customs, but um, their base dolls are pretty pricey. <laughs> Once I had the eye shape sketched out in my light blue pencil, I went in with a slightly darker blue pencil and kind of created this gradient to a darker blue at the end of her lash line. It's a bit hard to notice now, but once you add more layers of Mr. Super Clear and build up the pencil, it'll, it'll come through. <laughs> I actually decided to not to give this doll pupils because jellyfish don't have eyes, obviously. I just wanted her to look like you were looking through her and not really um, at her, <laughs> if that makes sense. I also used some blue chalk pastels for a little bit of eyeshadow, and I was really struggling on deciding what I wanted to do for nose blushing, uh, because the nose had a little bit of a yellowing to it, I wanted to cover it up, and I thought pink was a little too obnoxious looking, and so I just went in with a little bit of blue. To get that gradient effect inside of her irises, I'm just taking my light blue colored pencil and doing small circular motions to make sure there's no harsh lines anywhere. As for her eyelashes, I just wanted them to be very soft looking. The best way I have for drawing on eyelashes is to do very short, quick strokes with the pencil. Don't um, sit on it for too long because then you'll make the lines thicker. So if you just draw a quick wispy shape, I know it's a little scary to do, but it is the best method I have to drawing on very thin wispy lashes. You can also go in with a kneaded eraser. I like to do that at the very end of the lashes to make them as pointed as possible. I also defined the outer corners of her lips by making them a little bit of a darker blue. And I did the same thing with her nostrils because this vinyl, while it is super beautiful, it is very hard to see Kiyomi's nose. <laughs> For her eyebrows, I just drew them straight across because I wanted this doll to look almost expressionless considering that jellyfish do not have emotions. I'm starting to see her almost like a Vocaloid pop star that is jellyfish themed. <laughs> 
Using my white acrylic paint and a nail art brush, I go in and paint her scleras. In my experience, white acrylic paint tends to be a lot thicker than other paints, so make sure you're watering it down if you're trying to get it as thin as possible with minimal brush strokes. Now I'm going in with a very light blue acrylic paint to add a little bit of shadow into the whites of the eyes. And here I'm adding a very small light pink dot into the inner corners. For her lipstick, I'm mixing together these two acrylic paints because I wanted her lipstick to be a very light purple with some shimmery effects in it. Usually when I'm painting on the lips, I don't really draw an outline for the lip shape because I just am comfortable not having a guideline for the lipstick, but I think it is very beneficial to do lip liner first with a watercolor pencil if you are just starting out with your face ups. Now of course her face needs some shimmer and shine, so I'm going in with my Moonchild Anastasia Beverly Hills palette and adding lots of highlighter. I actually think this would be more beneficial to do this before you do anything else in the face up, that way the shimmer is not like getting over top of the eyebrows or the eyelashes in places where you don't want them. This time, however, I wanted to add some of that shimmer straight into her irises, so that is why I'm doing it now. <laughs> I felt like her eye makeup was missing something, so I decided to go in with some white acrylic paint and add a little bit of white graphic liner. And then I went over top with a little bit of light pink acrylic paint to add a little gradient at the ends. Since this doll already has so much sparkle, I wanted her catch lights to be in the shape of little sparkles, which I think is really cute. So a lot of my inspiration when I was doing this face up came from the moon jellyfish species specifically. So these little horseshoe shapes that you see me drawing onto the lower lash line, those are called gonads. They are actually uh, jellyfish's reproductive organs, but I just thought they looked cool for like a graphic liner detailing. Um, so that is what those are. <laughs> But also, fun fact about moon jellyfish, they have super super short tentacles, so they don't really have the capability to sting humans, so they are basically harmless, and they are just beautiful. I decided to add one more catch light into her eyes, making it a light pink dot. I also went ahead and added these really tiny nail art gems in a blue, pink, and purple color because they just match and I thought they were really pretty. <laughs> now that this doll finally has a face up, it is time to give her an outfit and a huge thank you to Emma for making this gorgeous jellyfish themed two piece. I love it so much. This organza fabric is super super pretty and for the translucent vibe we're going for, it is so gorgeous. I love it so much. I really really wanted there to be a bell shaped skirt and for there to be a resemblance of tentacles coming from it and the pearl detailing is so pretty. I really can't hype up Emma's work enough you guys, like you need to be following her. <laughs> As for her shoes, I really only have one pair of Laguna shoes in my stock box, so I'm just gonna say we're gonna work with what I got. <laughs> I also found this really cute pearly belt in my stock box, so I thought that would fit her vibe very well. Then I gave her a cute pearl necklace. I also had to add one more thing to her face, a detail I almost completely forgot about. So most jellyfish are actually bioluminescent, so that means I had to add some glow-in-the-dark paint over top of all of the white to make her glow at night. And with that, our jellyfish pop star is complete. I truly adore this custom with all of my heart. Uh, a jellyfish custom doll has been high up on my customs wish list for years now, but I've been too scared to do this face up on Kiyomi because her base doll is kind of pricey and I didn't want to mess it up since I only have one of her. Um, 
but I really hope that I lived up to my own expectations and of course your expectations. Let me know what you think of this custom down below in the comments and a huge, huge thank you to my patrons. Thank you so much to Hannah, Hunter, Lily, Ohio from Ohio, and Emmy Lesis. Without you guys, these videos would not be possible. So thank you so much for your support. And if you would like to join my Patreon, the link is in the description. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you'd like to see more videos from me, I have a full custom doll playlist over on my YouTube channel. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and uh, a happy Pride Month. Of course, since it is Pride Month, expect some customs coming. <laughs> so I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.